Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to talk about iffy or immediately invoking function expressions. So iffies are a way of writing functions that executes them immediately and it applies function scope. Now there have been a number of reasons historically for using iffies and you may have seen them around in different places. So this lesson is really just to talk about why they exist and how they're executed and how to identify them just so that when you see them in code, you won't wonder what is going on or why they're taking that approach. So here's a simple example of an iffy or immediately evoking function. Notice that we have a function written which we call immediately after it and normally that would not be allowed and it would break. But if we pass it inside of another set of params, this is actually passing it into a function, creating the normal function declaration as a function expression, and then executing it. So <laughs> there's a lot happening here. And from a technical level, you could read some articles in the notes on going deeper into the inner mechanics of these. But at a very simple level, all we need to know here is that if we write a function this way and wrap it in params, then it will execute immediately. So let's jump into the code and see this in practice a little bit more. All right, so what I have here is an initialization function, init function, and I am e wrapping it inside of params and calling this execution here, and that is going to automatically launch it. So there's a few things we could talk about here. First of all, this is basically the same thing as doing this. So notice that we are declaring the function, and then we're going to execute it or call it here. Now this is multiple lines of code so some people you will see if they're doing a function declaration they will all comment out this line here we'll get to the bottom in a second it'll just prevent that error. So if if we write it in this way it's just a simpler way of calling a function that we know needs to execute it or that we know needs to be executed. So at the simplest level that's one of the conveniences that immediately function evoke functions bring. Now let's comment this out and I'll just show you one other way of writing this. Now notice that we did the same thing here, but notice that the function is passed inside of these. So that turns this into a function expression rather than a declaration, and it's happening inside of this function. Then we go ahead and immediately execute it. Now, if you really get into some technical reading on this, you will see that there are some slight differences, and really this first approach is what is tends to be recommended. So we won't take this approach here as much, but you will see it in some instances, and it does technically work. So I uh, just wanted to point that out to you that you will see it in both ways. And again, the difference there was, is this being attached to right after the function that we just wrote, or is the call being attached there? Because really, this is the simplest function you could write in JavaScript. You know, we have function name like that. We could simplify it to an anonymous function, and we could simplify it further to this with just the execution right after it. So because this is actually a thing in JavaScript, this pattern is available to us. So for immediately executing stuff and forcing things into expressions, that does help. Now there's another added benefit, which is it helps with global namescape. So normally if we tried to call the app name outside of a function, that wouldn't work, right? We would get an error there. But let's reimagine a scenario where let's say that we have app name outside of our initialization function, and it's going to load it in that way. Let's just say for some reason in our app, we need this at a higher state so that things outside of our initialization function can reference it. So then if we try to grab app name, that's great. But let's say that we want to wrap this and prevent it from being executed in global scope and not accessible to other things, maybe for namespacing reasons or something like that. In that case, we could do an anonymous function like this and execute it like that and wrap all of our code inside of it. Now, what will happen here is... Oops. Now, what will happen here is app name is no longer accessible to us. And we should see that because we simply just wrapped it inside of a function. But the nice thing is, is that this function immediately executed. So all of our code is here, but we can't call function init outside, right? Because it's wrapped inside a function. So we would still need to do something inside of our code to actually 
initialize whatever function it is. So we may have immediately evoked functions inside of immediately evoked functions simply for the purpose of initializing our init, but also, oops, sorry. Yep. So we can initialize our init function, kick it off, and it will load out the app name. Um, and it's also wrapped inside of here for scope. So now we see kind of two of the different reasons for working with immediately evoke functions. One of them is simply just to execute our code automatically. And it's kind of a shorthanded cheat way so we don't have to write out the function declaration and then call it. So you'll see that sometimes. But then the other reason is sometimes for scoping and kind of breaking up code and preventing it from being namespaced. Now this second reason you might not see as much going forward because simply using the keyword let will prevent an object or const as well from being polluted into the global namescape, but we don't have that for functions in JavaScript. So if we wanted to prevent functions from being hoisted up into the global namescape scape, as we saw with our hoisting lesson, then this pattern would be helpful for us. So those are kind of the two of the main reasons we see for scoping issues, for preventing things from getting up into the window object, but then also just for immediately executing things. So again, remember anytime you see this pattern in JavaScript, that's what you're looking at. These are two of the use cases, and it's definitely something that you could dig into deeper if you want to get into the technical reasons and reasons behind it and how the language has evolved and how we may or may not be able to use it or might not need to use it in certain instances. You could explore that as well. But that is the iffy download for you. Hee <laughs> hee, iffy. Cool.